Thank you very much, Ed. Uh, first, I would like to thank Dr. Darobertis and Dr. Vicuña for including my name in this wonderful workshop and giving me the dream come true, if, which is to visit the Vatican. Okay. Uh, Yes, okay, but uh, I don't see the, the first slide. Ah, first, there we go. Uh, I just want you to remind that when you get a cold, usually you don't have antivirus, you, did, you have anti-inflammatory drugs. And the prevalent disease today are chronic disease. Most of them are neurodegenerative disease, inherited disease, or age-related disease. And there is no anti-inflammatory uh, drug that can be used in a chronic way because they are toxic. And through this presentation, I will show why they are toxic and why we need to discover a new molecular target to treat chronic disease. First, I'd like to thank many uh, graduate students that have worked in my laboratory, technical assistants, postdocs, and international and national collaborators and also the funding agency that are supporting my work, and lately, some companies. Uh, in order to identify a new molecular target, I will introduce to you two molecules, but I will discuss preferentially connexins. So I will talk preferentially of connexin, but also there is uh, another group of protein which is called panexin. These two proteins form membrane channels uh, in general, the most studied channels are the gap junction channels, but more recently, we uh, have worked in a dogma that we have uh, uh, worked the last 15 years showing that in fact the half of their channel exists in the cell surface, which are called EMI channels. And the best study EMI channels are the connexin uh, form EMI channels. These EMI channels are excimers of uh, connexins. Uh, in human, we have 21 genes encoding connexins, and three panexins. Panexins are derived from insect or invertebrate proteins called inexins. These connexins now, they play different uh, functions depending on where they are located in the cell. So we have the gap junction channels, which are, I will mention briefly, uh, the emi-channels that will be most of the talk related to, and there is connexin also in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. There are, mem there are membrane channels permeable to ions that regulate uh, mitochondrial metabolism. This uh, connexin also are found in cell-cell uh, uh, junctions, which are very strong cell addition proteins. And we can find connexin also associated with beta catenin for instance. So there are uh, proteins that are associated with uh, gene uh, transcription regulation. In general, gap junctions are good for uh, metabolic and electrical coordination of cells within a tissue. And here, there's an example of one cell that has been injected with a fluorescent dye, and you can see that diffused to many cells, and this is by simple diffusion. And in the next panel, this gap junction has been blocked with octanol, and the dye is retained in a single cell. In this panel at the top, there's two neurons which are activated by injection of current, and you see that there is a very fast coordination of the electrical activity. Uh, if you inject a current in one cell, you detect the current in the next cell. If you can do it in the different direction, it will happen the same. Then in 1989, we described that if you inject IP3 in one cell, these are three hepatocytes, which are loaded with FURIA2, which are, uh, is a calcium sensor, you can see that the cells that become red is the cell that detect IP3. So at the, before injecting IP3, the color of the three cells are similar, indicating that they are like communicated bottles of vessels. And if we inject IP3, the cell one becomes red in a very locate, a localized region, and cell two also. And in a few more seconds, Cell two is cold, but cell three becomes hot. So this has suggested that there was a regenerative system that was activated by the injection of IP3. This regenerative system will be, can you please activate the movie? This is the uh, 
uh, asini in the liver, and you see in real time that it propagates from, uh, <coughs> from peri uh, the terminal hepatic venule, which is the exit of the blood. So the blood goes into the asino through the terminal portal vein. It flows through the asinus and goes to the hepatic vein. We found that the glyco uh, glycogenic receptors are located in the output of this uh, 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 functional unit. And as I show you in the previous figure, the calcium wave propagates from the THV to the TPV in the backward sense of the blood flow. <coughs> now I will uh, introduce you to a new concept in cell biology, which is the ME channels, which is a pathway for cell cell communication uh, through the release of signaling molecules. Here we will use HeLa cells uh, that are transfected with connection 43 EGFP in green, as you see here, and uh, they are co-cultivated with HeLa cell parental, which are not expressing connections. And you saw that only those green cells uh, show uptake of ethidium bromide, which is not fluorescent, but when it goes into the cell, it becomes intercalated in the DNA, and they become fluorescent. So this was the first evidence for us that in mammalian cell, these emmy channels were active, and now we went looking for uh, more direct evidence in the cell membrane using whole cell patch clamp, and we found that connection 43 EGFP in the C terminal uh, show a very discrete unitary event, current unitary event of 220 picosim, which is actually twice the unitary current of gap junction channels made of connection 43, because they have half of the resistance. And now if we use connection 43 <coughs> modified with EGFP in the end terminal, the protein is located in the cell membrane, but it's not functional, okay? Consistent with the fact that uh, connection 43 gap junctions are not functional when uh, the protein is modified with EGFP in the end terminal. This is indicated that, in fact, the expression of connection 43 does not induce the expression of another channel that uh, mislead our interpretation, and, in fact, this current corresponds to connection 43 emmy channels. <coughs> Many other studies have indicated that these channels are permeable to signaling molecules, including glutamate, NAD+, and here ATP. You see, when you stimulate one cell, this cell releases ATP, and the ATP from released from these cells activate P2 receptors in the next cell, inducing again the release of ATP so, uh, and activating in the third cell. So there is two types of calcium wave, one as I show you in the liver, that is propagated through gap junction, and another one which is propagated through the extracellular medium and is mediated by extracellular ATP that is going to activate P2X receptors. These EMI channels do not open very frequently under physiological condition, but if we find cells that express uh, the complete machinery in uh, wild-type cells, like tannicides in the hypothalamus, when we activate with glucose, these cells show uh, glucose uptake through transporter as well as glucose uptake through EMI channels. This glucose is metabolized in the glycolysis, generate ATP, and this ATP activate uh, uh, potassium channels that we don't know yet how it activate EMI channels, but these EMI channels release ATP, and this ATP activate P2 receptor that shows now the release of calcium from, <laughs> induce the release of calcium from intracellular stores. So cells usually, uh, under normal conditions, can use this uh, EMI channels opening without co causing any uh, disturbance, and they are good for signaling. But under pathological conditions, like inflammation, we found in astrocytes, for instance, here, using a, a whole cell patch clamp, the current in ramp protocols, the, under control condition, there is no uh, evidence of unitary events. But if these astrocytes are exposed to pro-inflammatory cytokines like TNF-alpha and interleukin beta, one beta, now under a negative potential, we can see opening and closing of unitary events, and this 
again, are 220 picosiemens, uh, picosiemens as I show you before in HeLa cells. So this is the ID of the uh, uh, this single channels recording that are activated by pro-inflammatory conditions. <coughs> Another pro-inflammatory molecule that we found that activate Emmy channels are nitric is nitric oxide. So here we do a time-lapse experiment in which we measure the fluorescence of the cells in presence of ethidium bromide. It's very uh, low uptake under control condition. And uh, after treating the cell with GSNO, which is a NO donor, the uptake is increased drastically. And as here is shown in panel A, cells are very bright. But if you do the experiment in the presence of uh, lanthanum that blocks the channels or DTT, which is a, a sulfate real, uh, reducing agent uh, that would prevent the activation of uh, emi channel through nitrosylation, the cells stay dark uh, and uptake is blocked. <coughs> uh, we, we also show that in fact the cells uh, uh, doesn't present any uh, nitric oxide transfer through the membrane unless they have emi channels in the membrane. Here we generate a BSA, which is a big NO donor, and uh, when this uh, donor is present, the only molecule that will co go through the channels will be nitric oxide. And we put inside DAF2, which is a NO detector, and you see many cells are green. We repeat the experiment in the presence of an emi-channel blocker, beta glycerotenic acid, the cells do not become green, okay? Indicating that in fact, the emi-channel, when they open, they allow physiological uh, relevant amount of nitric oxide to go through. Then, since it's known that in inflammatory condition, calcium is really necessary, we wonder whether connexin emi-channels were permeable to calcium. For that, we isolated connexin 43 and reconstituted them in liposomes, <coughs> and as shown here, and these liposomes were loaded with a, a calcium fluorescent molecule, and then we did the experiment in the absence or the presence of connexin in the liposomes. So if we put calcium here, liposome without, con without connexin in the membrane, they stay flat, no signal, but if they have connexin 26 or connexin 43 in the membrane, there is uh, an increase in fluorescence indicating that calcium was going into the, the liposomes and increased the fluorescence. At the end of the experiment, we applied ionomycin to show that in fact, if we open a calcium permeable ion uh, 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 pathway in the membrane of this liposome that do not contain connexin 26, you can still see the increase in calcium. Okay, so we need in fact only connexin in the membrane to see calcium influx. Then through many, many experiments, we demonstrate that in fact emi channels are really relevant in different uh, cell of the brain in neuroinflammatory conditions. Under normal conditions, astrocyte form syncytium, and this syncytium is really useful to uptake glutamate, potassium that's being released from neurons that show high electrical activity. And there is no excitotoxicity thanks to this trap of glutamate that's been transformed to, glutam to glutamine and then delivered in, in a distance, uh, uh, in a place distant from the activity. Uh, under pathological condition, these gap junctions are closed and the neuron become more susceptible. And as I'll show you next, these emi channels, these cells express emi channels and they are very toxic to the cells. So using different insults, including stress during prenatal life uh, or beta amyloid peptide or different other conditions like viral uh, infection or bacterial infections, mast cells release pro-inflammatory molecules like TNF-alpha, ATP, histamine, and so on. And these pro-inflammatory molecules activate emi channels in uh, microglia. And microglia, again, they release glutamate and ATP, and plus uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines that activate astrocyte and oligodendrocyte. So there is a cell-cell conversation, which at the end is uh, translated in the release of glutamate and an ATP, that uh, is sensed by neurons, and neurons become uh, very sick by the calcium inflow uh, that's caused by these pro-inflammatory conditions. 
at the single cell level, uh, now I will summarize the data, indicating that there are several membrane proteins, including the P2X, P2Y receptors, the panexin-1 channels, which are pathway for ATP release, like here, and this ATP will activate P2Y and P2X receptors, and uh, these EMI channels made of connexins are permeable to calcium, and calcium, when it's increased inside the cell, activate panexin and, and P2X and, 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 and uh, connexin EMI channels, so this is a reverberant uh, uh, feedforward mechanism that increase the intracellular calcium, which is finally the toxic signaling that uh, leads cells to death. So for many years, it's known that calcium is high, and this calcium is required to activate many inflammatory intracellular pathway, and most of the inflammatory, anti-inflammatory molecule will block one, but not all this pathway. And this probably is the explanation why the, the anti-inflammatory molecules, if we use them in a chronic way, end up uh, destroying the kidney or liver or the heart, and they are toxic because they block one pathway, but the other pathway remain active and it change the gene expression and continue uh, altering the cell. So it was unknown whether this calcium comes from the intracellular store or from the extracellular environment. In a very in, in a cartoon, here we show that we have a, the cell membrane, possibly there is a pathway for calcium en entry, and this uh, tab is showing water that generate finally free radicals that destroy the, the proteins and the cells. And if we toss a, a lot of paper towel in the place where the tab is open, we will fill up the room with wet paper towel, and this is not good, but the easiest will be to close the tab like is shown in the bottom figure here, and maybe the cell can handle the situation. Uh, if we think in connection, we were lucky that uh, Maeda uh, from Japan, they published the first crystal structure of connection 26 semi-channels, and doing molecular modeling and uh, serendipity help, uh, we found boldin, which is a molecule from a Chilean tree called boldo, that we found uh, for the first time a molecule that blocks emi channel but doesn't block gap junction channels. We don't, we don't want to block gap junction channels because gap junction channels are required for coordinating many physiological function as I show at the beginning. But if we block now, specifically the EMI channel, it will be great. Now, bonding uh, is a molecule that shows that property, but uh, unfortunately, bonding is, uh, uh, the, the therapeutic concentration is very close to the toxic concentration, so you increase the concentration by 100 times, the animal will die with convulsions. Well, with the molecular uh, modeling, we discover a new molecule that's shown here. Uh, is the, called D4. It's a very simple organic molecule, which we call D4. Actually, we have discovered seven more, but we concentrate in this one. And if this is the case, we should be able to uh, prevent the organ dysfunction generated by inflammation in models of chronic disease. This is an example of a chronic disease, which is epilepsy. Epilepsy so far has been treated with many drugs that affect uh, molecular targets located in neurons. But here, we showed in brain slides of animal treated with PTZ. We have done it with m many models of uh, epilepsy. And here, this is microglia, uh, astrocyte, or neuronal layer. And you see, under control condition, which is on the left inside, there's no red cells, indicating that the channels are closed in these cells. We put ethidium bromide, that's why is the indicator here. And in rats treated with PTZ, many microglia become red, as well as astrocytes and neurons. And if we pretreat the, cell, the, the animals with D4 and then add uh, administrate PTZ, they look like control in, in the uh, right inside. Now, please activate the next movie. We'll have a mouse treated with PTZ on the left, and on the right we have D4 plus PTZ. And you will see that this animal in the left show convulsions and while the other animal is behaving normally. So the epilepsy is an inflammatory disease and the molecular target to be used uh, is glia, not neurons. 
Another example of chronic disease is muscular dystrophies, and MDX is a model, the mouse MDX is a model of muscular dystrophy, uh, and we see here that muscles do not express connection under normal condition. This is connection 39, 43, or 45. But the MDX, flux flux animal, they express connections. The only non-selective channel that's present in the muscle is panexin 1, which uh, we have shown before is very useful for potentiation of muscle contraction because they allow the release of ATP, which is necessary to uh, increase the muscle contraction. And there is no P2X7 or TRPV2. But in them, um, the ex animal show these two channels. So there are connections, there are there's P2X7, and there are T TRPV2 channels present in the uh, muscle, skeletal muscle of the mouse, the MDX mouse. Uh, if we now knock out the connection uh, 43 and 45, what we see is that the apoptosis detected by connection, by annexin 5 or Caspa 3 that you see here, annexin 5 in the, in the control mouse is very positive in the muscles or Caspa 3 in green here. In animals that are MDX but do not express connection 43 or 45, there is no apoptosis. And interestingly, this is a genetic disease, and when we uh, knock out connections, this is uh, the uh, dystrophin protein detected in the wild type. Uh, in the uh, MDX mouse, it disappeared, and has been thought for many years that the lack of this protein is the reason of the disease. When we knock out connection 43 or 45, the protein reappears, but of course we are not uh, changing the genetics, so the protein reappears and is mutated. Nevertheless, if we treat the animals now with D4 for four weeks, here we have several group of animals. This is control. We do the hanging test, which is similar to what the doctors do in the clinic. Uh, the, the, they request the patient to walk certain dis distance and come back, and this will be diagnosis of dystrophy. We have here the sick animal, that they do not last very long hanging with two legs or four legs from a, a network, and we treat them with a, a antioxidant molecule, n acetylcysteine or with D4 in red. And after four weeks, we see that with two, hand, two, two feet hanging, the animal is normal, or with the four feet hanging, it again, is normal. Therefore, we think, because we have done already experiment with uh, models of other diseases, like I show you uh, in the cell-cell uh, cell conversation in the brain, and Alzheimer, Parkinson, Huntington disease, this new molecular pathway uh, will be present, and connexin will be an excellent molecular target to prevent organ dysfunction. We are now working ALS. We have done one manuscript with a uh, Newman pick type C. Uh, multiple sclerosis is a very complicated disease, but we are starting to do in vitro study from cells obtained from animal models. Down syndrome, an infection disease. We have uh, data with parasites like T. cruzi. There are group that are show bacteria, and uh, infection is prevented by blocking DME channels. We have done that uh, experiment with virus. The AIDS virus is not incorporated in the cells if we block panexin 1 channels, and other groups are working with prions. Uh, we just uh, demonstrate that trauma also, the uh, uh, spreading depression is due to activation of these ME channels, so therefore propagation of cell death in trauma may be prevented by blocking ME channels. As I show you, muscular dystrophy is, uh, is treated with D4, and you can prevent the, the uh, organ dysfunction. We've already shown that diabetes, most of the uh, uh, renal dysfunction and uh, uh, lens dysfunction and heart dysfunction, the hypertension is prevented if the animal are treated with baldin. And obesity are uh, now being studied. So this is a story, ongoing story, and we don't know if all chronic disease can be treated with this uh, uh, molecular uh, target inhibitors, but so far it looks very encouraging. Thank you very much.